This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. In this module, we are examining modern speech technologies. This includes automatic speech recognition and speech synthesis technologies. In this lecture, we're going to examine another component in automatic speech recognition. Specifically, we're going to examine the pronunciation lexicon. This is one of the main components in modern automatic speech recognition systems. Let's recap our running example. A user is speaking to her smartphone, asking, hey Siri, will it rain today? The audio signal, the speech, reaches the microphone embedded in the device in the smartphone. The analog to digital converter in the smartphone's microphone then converts the analog audio signal into a digital representation. The acoustic model extracts features from the audio signal and then passes those features to a hidden Markov model, which hypothesizes the most likely sequence of phones given the audio signal and the probability models that are embedded in the hidden Markov model. This results in a sequence of phones or in some cases a lattice of phones and brings us to the pronunciation lexicon. Typically, in modern automatic speech recognition systems, the pronunciation lexicons are relatively simple. Here is an example of a classic and commonly used pronunciation lexicon. This is a tiny fragment of the Carnegie Mellon University speech recognition lexicon, the pronunciation lexicon. The transcription system, as we see here in the note, uses the ARPABET, which was a phonetic transcription system designed for American English that's commonly used in the speech recognition community. Alternatively, instead of these ARPABET symbols, you could imagine a lexicon written in International Phonetic Alphabet Symbols, or IPA. So let's annotate this and take a look at the different components. So each line in the pronunciation lexicon represents a word. In the left-hand column, we have the word written out here in all caps. So because we're dealing with speech, we don't have to deal with the ambiguities in case that we sometimes do when we're dealing with language in a text form. So we don't have uppercase versus lowercase when we're speaking. So for simplicity, this lexicon format just uses all uppercase. So aardvark is one of the words. In the right-hand column, we have the sequence of phones that make up the pronunciation of the word aardvark. So here is the first phone represented by the alphabet symbol AA1. That is the ah uh sound in aardvark. Then the r, d, v, ah, uh, r, k. Every word in the lexicon will have a line like this. There are other ways of representing lexicons, but the main point is this. 
every lexicon is going to have a list of words. And for each word, there will be some sort of form representing the identity of the word, which here just happens to correspond with the uh, orthographic form in uppercase, followed by the pronunciation of that word as a sequence of phones. So here, the proper name Aaron is represented as the phone A, R, A, N. Now, this format, this way of representing a lexicon, has some inherent limits. Now, if we've got a list, and if we're going to require that every word that our speech recognition system could recognize must be in this list, then that list is inherently limited. So it's a finite list by definition. And this means that typically an automatic speech recognition system will only be able to recognize the finite list of words that are listed in the lexicon. Now, this actually isn't much of a problem for languages like English and Chinese. So analytic languages and isolating languages, which you'll recall we talked a little bit about back when we were discussing morphology, are languages where there's typically a one-to-one -one relationship between a morpheme and a word. That's not quite the case in English, but it's close enough that we can get away with it. So in a pronunciation lexicon like this, notice that there are different lines for different morphological variants of a word. So this isn't the best example because it's a proper name, but it's still, it, it still shows the point. So here we have the name Aaron, made up of a single morpheme, the proper name Aaron. And then we have Aaron with an apostrophe S. So this actually has two morphemes in it. Aaron and S, the S being the plural morpheme marker. And similarly, Aaron's plural is made up of the name, the first morpheme, the name Aaron, followed by a distinct morpheme, z, the plural morpheme. So we've got Aaron and its pronunciation, Aaron's possessive and the pronunciation, and Aaron's plural, meaning more than one person named Aaron, with its pronunciation. Dog and dogs, similarly, would have separate lines. For a language like English, this isn't much of a problem. We can get away with this. But this becomes problematic if we want to deal with agglutinative or polysynthetic languages that have many morphemes on average per word. At that point, you might have to look at a more complex pronunciation lexicon formalism. So here in our example, the user spoke that was recorded by the microphone. The digitized speech signal is processed using digital signal processing techniques to extract a feature vector. That feature vector, one per time slice, is sent to the hidden Markov model. And the hidden Markov model, in conjunction with the Viterbi algorithm, comes up with a lattice or a single sequence of phones that the model believes are likely given the audio signal. The lexicon is then going to be used 
to match the potential words that may have been said. So given a sequence of phones or a lattice of phones, the, the automatic speech recognition system is going to use the lexicon to filter down the possible words based on their pronunciations. So let's skip ahead another page or two and see what this might look like. So we're on page 204 of the textbook Language, Technology, and Society by Richard Sprout. Imagine that the user uttered this sentence. She had your dark suit in greasy wash water all year. So after running this signal through the microphone, through the feature extractor, through the hidden Markov model, we will now have a sequence of phones that looks something like sh, e, h, a, d, y, o, r, d, a, r, k, s, u, e, t, e, n, g, r, e, s, e, w, a, Sh, u, a, t, er, a, u, y, er, er. Okay? So that could have gotten transcribed in the ARPAVET symbols in IPA or in some other uh, transcription formalism. So the question is how do we go from that sequence of sounds to this sequence of words. Well, we're going to match from the beginning, look up what words are pronounced that way. So in the, in the lexicon, so we're going to look in the lexicon and we'll look for items We'll look over in this column for items that have a sequence of phones that match a, a subsequence in our result. So if we were looking for, if we had a, er, a, n, then we could say Aaron is a potential word in this utterance. So for the utterance that we have here, we would be looking for something that is pronounced sh e, and that would match the word she. Had could match had. Suit, suit could match suit. Or if there was some ambiguity in the in the in the recognition process, it might have, the T might have been misrecognized as a P, which could give us soup, soup instead of suit, giving us suit. There's other potential misrecognitions that could have been made. So uh, the author mentions, here's one. So instead of she had your dark suit in greasy wash water all year. It was recognized as she had your dark soup in grease washed all year. So instead of greasy, we got grease. And instead of wash water, we got washed. So there's a couple of misrecognitions. Another that could also have been uh, licensed by the pronunciation lexicon would be jihaj your tarsuk increased what's waters oily ear 
So these are examples of misrecognitions and correct recognitions that all would have been licensed or run through the pronunciation lexicon. So in these three highlighted sentences, in order for the ASR system, the automatic speech recognition system, to propose these as possible sentences, possible recogni recognized hypotheses, each word in each of these sentences would have a line, or potentially more than one line, in the pronunciation lexicon. The next thing that we're going to look at is the language model, which will be a tool that we can use to narrow down which of these sequences is most likely given what we know about the English language.